To identify wildflowers, most people just look at flower color. But there's more to identifying flowers than just the color. As you look closely at these three wildflowers, you'll notice that the flowers themselves are very different. You have the dandelion, which is actually made up of multiple flowers put together. It's what we call a composite flower. The violet, which has five petals, but each petal looks different depending if you're looking at the bottom petal, the side petals, or the two top petals. The Dutchman's breeches, which are a tube-shaped flower that are very unique in the way they look and they look like what they're called. Then we come over here to a normal shaped flower, the Spring Beauty. This flower is what we call a regular flower because it can be split into different parts they are going to be equal. So besides looking at flower color, we have to look at the shape. We also have to look at the leaves. The Spring Beauty has two leaves, two leaves that look like grass. They're what we call linear. The edge of the leaves themselves have no serrations on them. The dandelion, the name comes from the French Dante de Leon, which means tooth of the lion, and the leaves on the dandelion are teethed. The violet has a heart-shaped leaf that has teeth on it. And the Dutchman's breeches is unique in that it is a very ferny looking leaf. So these are all things that we have to look at in addition to the flower. Sometimes we also can look at the stem itself. This is a common weed that we find in fields right now called purple dead nettle. The flower is purplish in color. It's an irregular flower. And the stem, if you notice, instead of being round, is actually square. There's not very many plants out there with square stems. So that's an easy way to tell what that plant is. You'll also notice that I have some cactus. And so sometimes something as simple as looking for spines or looking for leaves that are weird shaped or weird color will give that away. Believe it or not, the prickly pear cactus is native to Ohio and is found growing in some of our southern counties were in the rock outcrops. This one was transplanted up here to Wyandotte County and does just fine. So, when it comes to identifying flowers, remember to look at more than just the color, look at the leaf shape, the flower type, and even where it's growing or if there are unique things about the plant itself. Often the petals are called a corolla when you look at them collectively. And you can see that there are different shapes to this corolla. Anywhere from tube-shaped corollas to spurs, and as we take a look at some of these down below, we have some unique flowers, especially the one in the bottom left-hand corner called the spathe and spadix, that is a unique type of wildflower that we do have in Ohio. Here are some additional shapes that flowers can take. In addition to the single individual flower shape, we also have to look at how multiple flowers will come together into a different flower form. So in the upper left hand corner we have the single flower, but then multiple flowers can combine into spikes, racines, corums, umbels, and all the multiple different types that are shown down below. The dandelion, as we talked about earlier, is what we know as that composite flower which consists of ray flowers and disc flowers made up of tens to sometimes hundreds of different individual flowers. More on leaf identification. You'll notice that this flower's leaves are spotted. They're also a very shiny waxy leaf. The leaf here has what we call water spots on it. One way to identify this plant. And then this one has small whorled leaves. What's unique about it is it actually will stick to you. It's what we call cleavers and has small little serrations that actually hold on to your skin or to your clothes. When trying to identify a flower, you also have to take a look at that leaf, as I mentioned. And so here are some of the common names and some uncommon names to some of the leaf shapes you might find as you look through some of the wildflower guides or plant guides in order to identify what you found. Some of these are going to be more common than others. Others are going to be more rare, so it'll be easier for you to identify the flower or the plant based on how rare that leaf shape is.
In addition to shape, you also have to look at how the leaves themselves are situated. So down in the bottom right hand corner, we have the whorled leaves, which is rings of three or more leaflets. So not only are we looking at the individual leaf shape of those leaflets, but we're looking at how those flowers come together. And there's a few others throughout here that talk about that with the bipinnate, which is in the top left hand corner. And then throughout we have the pinnate and there is an opposite and an alternate. For those of you actually interested in identifying wildflowers, the internet's great, but sometimes uh, anybody can put whatever they want on the internet and there's a lot of misidentification on there. And sometimes when you're in the middle of the woods, the internet just doesn't work. And so I utilize uh, a few field guides. The Audubon field guide is one of the more common ones that'll go over the more common flowers that we're gonna find here in Ohio. Newcomb's wildflower guide uses a key that helps you key out the flower if it's in bloom. Then as we get into some basic information, wildflowers of Ohio will have some good pictures and some good basic information as to what the flower is used for. And then Peterson's field guide is going to be like Audubon with the exception there are drawings inside instead of photos. So just depending on what you prefer to have, those are some uh, field guides that are good to use. Now when it comes to the basic information, I also like to use field guides. So you may wonder how in the world do I know if the plant's good to eat or not? And so there are a lot of books out there. This is one that I use for edible wild plants. And he also has written a few on medicinals. And then one of the medicinal books that I use is Backyard Medicine. And I have a lot of others on my bookshelf that help me identify what it is that can be used medicinally, what can be used edibly, and then actually how to identify it. The most important thing is if you are interested in that type of stuff is you wanna be 100% sure uh, what uh, you're getting into before you eat anything because there are definitely poisonous plants that are out there. Happy hunting.